do you like Jesus? Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Good morning again, church. Good to see each and every one of you here this morning as we continue to worship the risen Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what kind of story do we have this morning that we hear in John? Yeah. You know, in meaningful conversation, there's what's said, and then there's what is actually being said. Yeah. The conversation underneath the conversation. You know, many times in our lives, things and conversations get twisted up. You know, sometimes when we're on the phone, we say one thing, but it's really actually another thing that is meaning to be said. So when Jesus talks to Peter in the 21st chapter of John, as we've heard this morning, what is actually being said is pretty profound, isn't it? Yes. It should and you know, will change Peter's life as if it hasn't already been changed enough. There is on the inside the extraordinarily awkward interchange between Jesus and Peter. This is the first time that they've really spoken since Peter's denial. You have to believe that it's eating Peter alive. It would have been eating Peter even before talking to Jesus. It might have been one thing if Jesus had stayed in the tomb. Peter would have had to live with himself for denying his friend and teacher Amen. at the moment when Jesus needed him the most. He would have hated himself for it the rest of his days. But then Jesus rose from the dead and he had actually looked Jesus in the eye again, Peter did. Now he knew that he was going to be forced, however, to deal with his demons. Yeah, head on. Peter was probably going through this conversation in his head over and over again, thinking over what he would say to Jesus, imagining what Jesus would say to him. Perhaps he was even considering initiating the conversation himself. But then Jesus is standing there in front of him mm -hmm. by a charcoal fire. Yes. Yes. The last time Peter was by a charcoal fire was when? I bet that crowd hushed at that very oh, moment. Yes. Yes. Everyone knew Peter had this coming to him. Yes. And everyone loved to see a good fight. Right? Yes. And then he asked again. And again, who? To me, you know, it's not like asking over and again and again and again. That gets a little awkward for Amen. me. How about you? Amen. And Jesus keeps telling Peter that if he does love him, as he insists he does, then to do what? Feed his sheep and his lambs. Right? Yeah. But that's just the outward conversation. But what Jesus is really saying is, if you love me, then do something about it. Amen. Show me. Amen. And not like the last time. Yes. Yeah. This time, feed, tend, and actually do it. Yeah. What he doesn't say is, if you love me, have a nice fuzzy feeling in your belly, feel all warm and tingly inside, yeah. but follow me and do what I say. You know, this isn't the first time he told Peter, of course, you know, to follow him, is it? But this time, it's a little different. This time, there's more room for Peter's denial, for his seeking doubts. This time, Peter is to follow Jesus all the way. And ministering to others, and spreading the good news in life and in death. But then, of course... There's one more level to the conversation. John recorded this for us in his gospel, I think, because we're also in on the conversation as well. Because if we love Jesus, then feeling something isn't good enough. Mm -hmm. Thinking things in our minds and hearts isn't enough, is it, brothers and sisters? Yes. We need to live it. Yes. We need to do it. Yes. We need to feed. We need to tend. We need to follow Jesus all the way and not just a little bit. Yes. And when we have been called, oh, yes. I got to do something like that, yes. it should stir up something in us and make us excited about it, right? Yes. And we have to listen yes. and do it. Yes. No matter whether the believer is new or whether they're an 
old believer, a pew sinner or a leader, the call of Christ is the same. Yeah. Follow me. Yes. Following Christ means doing it and not just saying yes. that we're going to do it. Yes. Are we like Peter spreading the net for new believers and professing a true love for our Savior? Or are we just saying it? Or we maybe, like I said before, sitting on the sidelines, watching others do the work of Christ. Make no mistake. Any who heed the call to follow Jesus are likely to encounter rejection and suffering along the way. Jesus makes this clear for both Peter and Paul. And it is a wounded healer that we worship. But make no mistake. Jesus is no symbolic head of his church. He is active, seeking, directing, guiding, behind, beside, ahead of us, yes. calling us to follow him yes. and to go and do what he is calling us to do. And follow him into God's good future, loving him and singing praises yes. as we go. You know, Peter got to walk on water. Mm -hmm. Lazarus got to come out of the grave. Yes, yes, yes. Esther got to free her people. Yes. Joshua got to see the sun stand still. Yes. Moses got to do what? Part the Red Sea. Peter got to heal people with his shadows. Yes. Paul and Silas got to see the jail bars come yes. open. Yes. Zechariah got to see an angel. this morning, yes. that today, the same God is alive and well. The Jesus that stood on the sea, on that seashore, is our Jesus. Yes. He is ready. Yes. He is willing. Yes. And he is yes. waiting for yes. us to listen to him, yes. to follow his words, and yes. to experience an abundant life in yes. him. Yes. 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 He's waiting for us yes. to receive a life of goodness. Favor and blessing. He's waiting for us to be ready to cast a net at his leading. He is waiting for us to sit down and celebrate life with him. So when's the last time you cast your nets? When's the last time that you have invited someone to church?
You know, I feel very unworthy sometimes Amen. to come to the table. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> but I'm always reminded that this is not a denominational table. Amen. It is a table that is God's table yes. that is prepared and served for all of God's children. Amen. And then I can get excited. Oh. And nothing excites me more than to know that I can be forgiven yes. and saved by God's grace and His yes. love. Yes. That I'm worthy to come to the table of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Brothers and sisters, the work is not done. Let's do something about it. So what will it be that you want to do to help continue to cast your nets? Say, Lord, here I am. I am ready to follow you and to do your will. And not just say that you're going to do it, but actually do something about it for the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.